Are you saying no school children died of COVID? I'm saying it was the safest group. They were the less vulnerable group, and they suffered and will suffer more from the mismanagement of COVID than they will from the exposure to COVID. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Dr. Phil exposing the reality of COVID and how it affected children that many of us have known for a very long time since the beginning. Now, I guess since the cat's out the bag and we all know the truth, it's okay to talk openly about COVID. Remember a few years ago, this video would get flagged, deleted. My whole channel would get nuked off of the interwebs. You might even get locked up for saying some of these things. I'm kind of exaggerating, but not really. Now here we are, 2024, about three to four years later, we could talk openly about these things. And Dr. Phil, out of all the guys in the world, is talking about it and telling the 100% truth. Now, before we get to the video, I just want to say this. Dr. Phil has a primetime show coming out, right? So 8 p.m., nighttime, more in line with your regular CNN, MS-13, DNC, that kind of a news show. Now, why is that particular detail relevant? Well, normally Dr. Phil is a daytime show, more for stay-at-home moms, people like this. So the content during the daytime show is more for women, more emotionally based and more gossip and that kind of thing. Now, I'm not saying women don't consume news content, don't misunderstand me, but the majority of Stay at home, daytime people are not going to be interested in the more hard hitting primetime CNN type news. So, Dr. Phil is now switching the content for the primetime. I saw him on the border talking about the border crisis and migrants. That's not a daytime talk show type of topic. They don't really reach that kind of topic on The View, which is where he was promoting the actual primetime show. They're more into, oh, I hate Trump. He's so bad, and he did this, that, and the third. They're more just into the feelings, not so much about the hard-hitting news. And now Dr. Phil wants to get away from the feelings, away from the fee-fees, and more into the actual, real, everyday news. Now, before I go any further, let's go ahead and get into the actual clip. If you want to see the full eight- or nine-minute clip, I will link to it in the box. If you're on IG, visit the link in the bio. Go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it which yes. is um, we've got issues <clears throat> and a lot you were f referring to it in the last segment how much has changed since you first got started in this and one of the things is social media mm -hmm. so you say you're not the only voice in your kids ears so you have to be the best voice mm -hmm. let's pause right here I got to pause it at certain points because the view they might want to give me a copyright or whatever so y'all please pardon me I'll just pause it and then give my two cents at certain points explain that well think about it in like 08 09 smartphones came on and and kids started they stopped living their lives and started watching people live their lives mm. the phones change everything smartphones not just your regular cell phone that i had back in the day with the you know you had to press the button a million times to get one letter smartphones change everything for children and adults but of course it affected children and adults in different ways which is a different story and for now i digress mm. and so we saw the biggest spike and the highest levels of depression, anxiety, loneliness, and suicidality since records have ever been kept. Hmm. And it's just continued on and on and on. And then mm -hmm. COVID hits 10 years later, and the same agencies that knew that are the agencies that shut down the schools for two years. That was the worst decision ever. I mean, you're talking about the, the time in a child's life, you can't get back. That's one very important, precious resource that's more valuable than money, time. And you can't get it back. You're talking about a child that's, let's say, seven years old, and they miss two years of proper in-school learning. They're, they're totally affected for the rest of their lives as a result of that. Kids are barely able to... Kids were having a hard time reading before the C-19 situation, now it's gotten that much worse. But let's continue. Who does that? Who takes away the support system for these children? Who takes them away and shuts it down? And by the way, when they shut it down, 
they stopped the mandated reporters from being able to see children that were being abused and molested, and in fact sent them home and abandoned them to their abusers. You know what? And a lot of that was happening. There were like a lot of the Zoom calls. Teachers are talking about they would see children being abused on the Zoom call. And then not just the actual physical abuse that was happening on the Zoom call, but you could see the environment that the kids were living in. It was crazy. It was a mess. COVID really exposed a lot. It was really bad what they did as far as the shutdowns, but it was also an eye-opening experience to actually see how Americans were living with no way to watch and referrals dropped 50 to 60 percent so there was also a yeah. pandemic yeah, going there was, on they were trying to save they were trying to save so kids well. lives remember we know a lot of folks who died do you know a lot of folks that died i mean maybe people that's your age some of your colleagues whoopi goldberg okay 60s 70s 80s or whatever but children little kids i don't know of a lot of little kids that died unless they were a thousand pounds which put them at risk of dying anyway just for being so big but let's keep on going during this so the, it wasn't people weren't laying uh, around eating children. bond but well you know what we're lucky maybe we're lucky they didn't because we kept them out of the 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 places that they could get, be sick because no one wanted to believe we had an issue i, used I mean everybody knew it was an issue so to say that is wrong everybody knew it was an issue but the question was how bad was the issue how severe was the issue was the response that we gave to the issue overboard? Was it just doing too much? You're putting out a fire with a tidal wave, with a tsunami. Let's have the appropriate response for whatever the perceived issue is, rather than just this nuclear type of catch-all response that wound up doing much more harm than good. You see, the virus ain't gone nowhere. People still get COVID every day. But yet we're back to regular activities. So why couldn't we do that back then? Especially with those who we knew from the beginning were not in the high risk category. You're not elderly. You're not obese. You're not dealing with other comorbidities. Little kids were not in this group of people that were going to be at risk ever. You're saying no school children died of COVID? I'm saying it was the safest group. They were the less vulnerable group and they suffered and will suffer more from the mismanagement of COVID than they will from the exposure to COVID. And that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Well, Phil. That's all big facts. That's all big facts. And the, and the crowd's applauding. Now, I don't know if the crowd was applauding because it was the end of the segment and they had to wrap it up and they wanted just to support Dr. Phil. Cause you know how it is in a lot of these studio audiences. They'll have little signs to say, please clap or whatever. Maybe, maybe not. I think the audience really resonated with what he said because a lot of people they, they see in their children the effects of two-year lockdown or whatever, six months, one-year, two-year lockdown. They see the effect that they had on their children. They see the effect that, quote-unquote, mobile learning. They see the effects of the changes that happened, and they also don't really see how it benefited them that much. Let's see how to wrap it up right here. No. We don't even have time to talk it out now, man. But thanks for coming. The new book is called We... Okay, that's the book right there. We've got issues. It's this not a promo for the book. I just wanted to show you Dr. Phil talking about what's happening with C-19 or what happened previously with C-19 and also what's continuing to happen because there's one thing about what the policies were back when the virus first came out, when the virus first came on the scene and there was widespread panic. There's one thing to talk about that. It's a different thing to talk about the consequences, what has come as a result, not just of the policy of shutdown, lockdown, kids not being able to go to school properly, at least not in-person learning. That's one piece of it. But then you also have, okay, did any of these kids get the vaccination? How many healthy 18-year-olds went to the military and were forced to get the vax, and then they wind up in the hospital with heart issues and things of this nature? As I close, I want to say this. Shout out to my doctor. I won't say his name. But he was in the military, and I won't say we're branch either because I ain't trying to have anybody, you know, clinical dots. But he was in the military, and he said, you know what, I had to leave because as a doctor in the military, I got tired of seeing these healthy 18-year-old strong young men get the C-19 vax specifically, not the other vaccinations, the C-19 vax specifically, and then wind up in the hospital with serious health issues immediately afterwards. Got tired of seeing it. He didn't want to be part of it anymore. He didn't want to be complicit in 
this this scourge upon humanity. I think many of us saw this whole thing coming, a brand new untested vaccination. I'm not saying don't get it because they might try to flag me and say, oh, you're trying to give misinformation. Nah, I'm saying whatever you want to do, that's on you. But to force it, to mandate it, the policies surrounding COVID, the vaccinations were just terrible. 100% 100% terrible, and I hope we don't go down that road anymore. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think Dr. Phil is making sense here? Do you trust him? Do you believe him? Do you think it's just a way for him to promote a new show and a new book, and that's not really how he feels? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. Of course, I recognize that he's promoting the show and the book. I get it, 100%. That does not make him wrong. What he's saying here is right. The way that COVID was handled was awful. It was terrible. And it should be a case study and exactly what not to do during a time like this. This did not help. All it did was just make things worse. It was a panic reaction. Oh, we got to shut it down. We can't go outside. It ruined the world in many different ways, not just the USA and our children and our children's future. But whatever your thoughts are, Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.